How's it going, everyone? Maryland here, and that's right, it's time for more of Maryland's Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Adventure! Last time, I took down the Elite Four. This time, the only thing that stands between me and the title of Pokemon League Champion is the Pokemon League Champion. So I will be fighting against the champion, who is pretty darn tough. Definitely in this game. I know I've been saying these games are not, oh, they're not that tough. You know, they're really easy. But the Elite Four really ramps it up, and the champion is intense. Absolutely. I don't know why I'm looking at all this stuff. Uh, I guess I was going to say I'm leading with Majesty Jr. here. I did heal everyone up, and I hope this will be the right decision. But yeah, anyway, it's time to fight against the champion. Have you been keeping well? Thank you for Mount Coronet. I'm truly grateful. Together, you and your Pokemon overcame all the challenges you faced, however difficult. It means that you've triumphed over any personal weaknesses too. The power you learned, I can feel it emanating from you. But that's enough talk. Let's get on with why you're here. As the Pokemon League Champion, I accept your challenge. It's just so good. The music is so good. I just had to let it play. Okay, anyway, that's right. It is time to fight the Pokemon League champion, Cynthia. So, as I mentioned in the last episode, I will be telling you all of their moves, all their items, stuff like that. So if you don't want that spoiled, you know, this is your warning. But it's to try to help you kind of get an idea of you know, what to do against them, because this is actually a pretty legitimately tough fight. Also, I'm hoping I'll have a chance to use Dance. I realize I didn't use her in any of the other Elite Four battles, but she is set to take on a certain Pokemon of Cynthia, so hopefully I'll have that chance. It might not work out, but we'll see. All right, so the first Pokemon on her team is the Spiritomb. Now, this is way different than the Spiritomb she had in Diamond and Pearl. This thing has Shadow Ball, Dark Pulse, Psychic, and Sucker Punch. So it's like... Almost, well, it is exclusively attacking. Theoretically, you could set up against it. It's not that bad because it doesn't have the highest attack or like special attack in the world, but it is EV trained in both attack or special attack and hit points. So it's kind of bulky and it's kind of, uh, kind of strong too. But as far as like finding a Pokemon to set up against, like if you want to use X items, which if you're struggling with Cynthia, I made a video like preparing for the Elite Four. Man, look at that. That did like nothing. And, you know, I recommend buying X items and using them here. Jeez. Oh, that was a crit though, so that's not so bad. Uh. Yeah, well, <laughs> we're just gonna have to deal with this. So this thing does have a citrus berry as well, and it has pressure, so it will drain away at the power points of your moves. Oh, looks like I got the crit this time. I actually don't know if I wanted it there, but, well, it's fine, it'll work out. Now, I am also playing on set, so I don't have the luxury of switching out immediately between each Pokemon she sends out. That makes this fight much more challenging. It's not the default option, though, but just keep that in mind. All right, so here's her Gastrodon. And again, the Pokemon she sends out, the order will probably vary based on which Pokemon you have out. She'll try to counter you, although I believe she always saves the star of her show, her Garchomp for last. So, hmm, this thing has Scald, Earthquake, Sludge Bomb, and Rock Tomb. So it's kind of mixed, and it's very bulky. So what I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm actually gonna set out Doorbell here, and I am going to set up my screens with Doorbell. 
because I guess I don't take damage from Earthquake, which it's probably going for. Yeah, that's what I thought. And it does have leftovers too, so it's a bulky Pokemon. It's definitely very bulky. Um, so I guess I'll set up Light Screen first. That'd make the most sense. Okay, well, sure, go for Rock Tomb. <laughs> sure, why not? All right, it's fine. So I'll set up Reflect now, too. There, so now I got my dual screens up, and that gives me a lot of extra protection against her whole team, actually. Now, they won't last forever, but hopefully they'll last long enough to be useful. Grass Knot will make short work of this thing. Oh my gosh, it's so bulky! It has so much HP, I guess. Yeah, it's EV train in both HP and in, a, in defense. So, special attacks are the way to go, but... Oof. Oh, this is kind of a mess. You know what? I think I'm just going to use a full restore here because... Doorbell might actually be pretty useful. And... Scald isn't generally hitting for a lot, right? Well, it's fine. I'll save it for later. I just want to get rid of this thing. All right, it's gone. Get out of here. <laughs> quash, okay. Strange time to learn a new move? No, it's fine. You don't need to learn Quash. Oh, yeah, you healed your burn. All right, Roserade. So, yeah, Grass Poison type, quite strong. It has Dazzling Gleam, Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, and Energy Ball, and it's very fast. It's It has some EVs and speed, most of its EVs in special attack, and then a little bit in HP as well. So, it's kind of a, a coin flip here, because it has Shadow Ball, I have Psychic. We're weak to each other. I have the light screen up and it doesn't. So I'm just gonna hope. I'm gonna hope, all right? Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, come on. There we go. Yeah, you can already see how useful light screen is. Like, you know, being able to tank that Shadow Ball. That's pretty nice. Oh, here is like the worst Pokemon on our team. Like, literally the worst thing on our team. Milotic. This thing is awful. Like, it is just so bad. So, it has the, uh... Man, where do I begin? <laughs> I'll begin with its item and all that. So, it has the Flame Orb, which will burn it after the first turn. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, because that activates its ability, Marvel Scale. And Marvel Scale raises its defense by, um... It raises its defense by 50%, which is pretty crazy, while it's affected by a status condition. So that's why it does it. It has Mirror Coat as well, which is why I don't really want to attack it with any special base moves. Yeah, see, it would have deflected it and done a lot of damage to me. Now, unfortunately, it's still gonna... Like, it got its, um, it got its Marvel Scale activated, so that's not good. But, you know what? It's fine. I'll make it work somehow. Um, what do I want to do? I mean, I guess, I guess probably Poison Jab. It doesn't have much it can do to something like my, uh, my Toxicroak here, at least. It can only use Ice Beam or Scald for its damaging moves. But, as you can see... I'm barely doing anything to it. That's kind of scary. So it's not really going to be able to do much to me. And now that it's used Scald, it's probably only going to use Ice Beam. That's fine. I can make this work. I'll make it work. It's just going to be a little slow. Yeah, because she likes to use Recover. So you really have to ramp up your damage by quite a bit. So you could just kind of stall her out for a while. Or you can just... I don't really know. I guess I could try to confuse with Rock Climb. It's kind of a stretch, but... We'll just see where this goes. If I can waste some of her Ice Beam, that might be good as well. My light screen did wear off, though. 
Oh, that was a crit even in that. Only did that much. Yeah, for EVs, she has both HP and defense EVs. So, yeah, this thing is just really a pain to take down. It's very strong. Okay, so all of my screens are down. It's using Ice Beam. So what would I want to do against that? What I could do, I could switch out for Majesty Junior again. I think I'll do that. Hopefully this will work. You gotta watch out for Mirror Coat, but sometimes you gotta do a lot of damage too, because physical attacks are not really the way to go. Uh, she's probably gonna go for it. Well, let's just show it off anyway. It's fine. All right, Grass Knot. Okay, Skull, that's fine. It's actually ideal. So how much is Grass Knot doing? Oh man, it's still not enough. <laughs> Oof, I really could use a crit. So if it can get, if it can use Mirror Coat now, that'd be lovely. Cause I might be able, to, oh no, it's using a cover, okay. Water is my main weakness here. I don't really have a good answer. <laughs> and I knew that, I knew that, but, eh. We'll somehow make it work. Yeah, she has a lot of PP for a cover too, so. If you have something with pressure, it's not bad to use that against Milotic, just to try to wear it out of that. This is also a perfect Pokemon to use X items against in a situation like this. I'm gonna try to avoid it, but know that if you get stuck on this Milotic in a situation like this, or you just can't out damage it, you can use an X special attack, and that will raise your uh, your special attack by two stages every time you use it. So it's very useful in that case. I'm hoping I can just get like a crit or something. Wait, was that it? Was that it? No, it wasn't. Oh, so close. She's gonna use a full restore, but that's actually not a bad thing because that'll remove the burn. So I might be able to use this to my advantage here if I'm clever. Although not like I was really doing that much damage with, um, with what you would call it anyway. Um, I'll grass not. Okay, she's withdrawing. I didn't really expect that. Lucario. Interesting. All right, so Lucario, let's talk about this thing. So yeah, it is a special attacker. It is not at all physical based, so don't think about using anything uh, to lower its special attack or whatever. It has Aura Sphere, Dragon Pulse, Flash Cannon, and scarily enough, it has Nasty Plot, so you really don't want it to use that. No, oh, man, this is kind of tough. So I don't really want to have to set up a turn. Like if it uses Nasty Plot and I use Surf, that'd be really good. If it uses an attacking move and I switch out, I'm gonna take damage with whatever I switch out too. So what I'm gonna hope, I'm gonna hope it's gonna use Nasty Plot. What I think is gonna happen is it's gonna use Aura Sphere, but if it uses Aura Sphere and if I switch to anyone else, like it's gonna hit them for a lot of damage and it's gonna outspeed them too, so I probably won't be able to use them anyway. And I have a Quick Claw. Okay, so I went for Aura Sphere, that's fine. It's expected. All right, so I really need to do something to this. Now, I don't really have a lot of special defense with Floaty, so this might be a little scary. I, uh, Dance won't be able to outspeed Lucario. Lucario is very fast, very fast. It's tempting to go for high jump kick, but you know, Dance is gonna get completely obliterated by the, uh, by the Aura Sphere, so that's not really the best move here. Um. Shoot, I really don't know right now. I guess maybe fidgeting. Let's see if fidgeting can get the job done. Again, with fidgeting being part poison, it means Aura Sphere is only going to do neutral damage, but it still hits really hard. Okay, it's going for Nasty Plot. That's scary, but it means I get a chance to hit it, and it is weak to fighting because it's a fighting steel type. We've already fought Lucario by now, but is it enough? Haha, <laughs> there we go. Way to go, fidgeting.
Yeah, and see if I switched out, it would have pulled off the nasty plot, <laughs> and then I would have gotten hit by it. Okay, so this is... This... We'll see how this goes. This might actually work out okay, because she's probably going to use a full restore here, but that will get rid of the Marvel scale effect, so I'll be able to hit it for more damage. So I don't want to use Poison Jab for sure. Yeah, there we go. But that might not be a bad thing that it's using that, so... Because all this thing can do against me is use Ice Beam. Okay, that didn't do very much. <laughs> Darn it! Okay, but it's fine. Oh, right! It, that's right, the Flame Orb doesn't get used up. It stays on the whole time. Well, so much for that. But the good news is, this gives me a great chance to recover. So, let's go ahead and use a Max Potion on Doorbell. <laughs> Speaking of recover... Well, we still need to get past this wall. That's the problem. But I think I can do it. I think I'll be able to. It's just gonna be a little rough. All right, and since you're really not doing that much, let's uh, let's use this Revival Herb. Okay, so now everyone's in pretty good shape at least, which is good. That's the advantage of this. So where do I go from here? Well, I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna switch out for Doorbell, but I might as well do that on a turn where you're using, like, Recover or something. Oh, man. It's just so, so rough getting past that Milotic. Now, if you have any physical-based, um, physical-based Grass-type or Electric-type moves, by all means, go for it. There's a lot less risk you have to deal with. It's still very bulky, though, but you don't have to deal with, um, with whatchamacallit, at least. Uh, I don't think you're gonna help right now. So if he uses Ice Beam, Squawk's not gonna be good. Floaty's not gonna be good. Floaty can't really handle Milotic. Yeah, and I don't really think there's anything Dance can do here either. I'm sorry, Dance, but don't worry. The opponent that I want to use against you is coming up pretty soon. All right, so let's set up light screen. This is gonna take a while, but you at least have, well, actually your special attack isn't really that great. Um, we'll set up reflect just because. And eventually this thing will run out of recover at least. So that's kind of nice. If you have anything like Thief, you could theoretically use that to steal the Flame Orb. Or if you have something with Knock Off, you could use that to get rid of the Flame Orb. Because the Flame Orb is what gives it so much defense against the, um, against physical attacks. And then Recover is what just, you know, makes it such a pain to take down. But it will eventually run out of Recover. <laughs> Someday. Actually, this might work. Might be in a loop here. <laughs> oh, you can do it, come on. I mean, at least I get to listen to this lovely music. See, I don't even think a crit will be enough. Maybe, just maybe. 
Okay, that's great. So I think I'm in good shape now. That's really good. Okay, so... Grass Knot! There we go. Maybe it ran out of recover, finally. Ugh! That silly sea serpent! Alright, time for a final Pokemon. I can't remember the last time I was put in a corner like this. It's Garchomp! Oh yeah! So it has Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Swords Dance, and Poison Jab. Just all around amazing coverage. Which is pretty crazy if you ask me. So what I really don't want it to do is use Swords Dance. Um... I'm very worried about that. It does have a Yachi Berry, by the way, so that is pretty scary. Uh, I don't think it's gonna go for Swords Dance. I think it's gonna... Well! <laughs> I messed up! It's fine, I probably would have been in trouble anyway. Okay, so yeah, the Yachi Berry, it actually protects it from... Oh, good job, Doorbell. It protects it from being, uh, well, from being hit by Ice-type moves. I won't let this end yet. This match is too fun to let it end this easily. So, your first Ice-type move is not going to do very much to it. But after that, it should be fine. I mean, if you can do this, Doorbell, by all means, go for it. I didn't think so, but that's fine. Alright, well... Oh no, <laughs> Reflect wore off. That's exactly what I wanted to avoid. Okay, Dance, are you bulky enough to handle this? Hopefully. <laughs> nope, that's not happening. Well, there goes that plan. Yeah, you know, that Garchomp didn't use, um, it didn't use Earthquake against me, strangely enough. Uh, in my Shining Pearl version, that is. All right, so this is definitely a dire situation here but I think I can overcome it. Yeah, my original plan was to have Dance use Charm to lower that thing's attack, but yeah, that did not seem to work out. Okay, Night Slash, come on. Woohoo, man. Oh, that hits me so hard. Okay, but you survive thanks to, you know, all that, and <laughs> hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh no, you didn't survive. <laughs> yeah, it has rough skin, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Oof. All right, well, that's fine. I'll definitely take that. Yeah, again, ideally, you'd be setting up and using, like, you know, X items. Like, if you're really struggling against her, that can help. That Garchomp is a pain. Everyone I talked to said that she didn't really even use Swords Dance against uh, them either, so it's like, oh well, maybe this will work. Nope! <laughs> Which is kind of surprising actually, but that's fine. It's fine. See again, that's what I mean about the AI being kind of, kind of wily like that. Just a few minutes ago, you were the most powerful challenger, and just now you became the most powerful of all the trainers. You are now our newest champion. That was excellent. Truly an outstanding battle. You gave the support your Pokemon needed to maximize their power, and you guided them with certainty to secure victory. You have both passion and calculating coolness. Together, you and your Pokemon can overcome any challenge that may come your way. Those are the impressions I got from our battle. I'm glad I got to take part in the crowning of Sinnoh's new champion. Now then, step onto the lift. Bye. The room ahead is the Hall of Fame. What are you doing here? Who let you in here? Merlin, your last battle was splendid. Oh, hello, Professor Rowan. Hmm, a child I enlisted for my Pokedex project has come this far. It's only natural that I come and witness their crowning achievement. Merlin, I shouldn't call you a child anymore. You've grown into a real champion. 
Professor, you still enjoy the enthusiasm kids bring to your research, don't you? Step this way, please, Maryland. Professor Owen, I need you over here as well. It's been a long while since I last entered this room. If the last time you were here was when I became champion, then yes, that would be quite a long time ago. Maryland, welcome to the Hall of Fame. Your names will be recorded for posterity here. What you are leaving are the memories of your adventures so far. It's time to record your names, you and your Pokemon. Remember, your Pokemon are partners that grew with you through many challenging battles. This machine will make a permanent record of your achievement. Welcome to the Hall of Fame! Majesty Junior! Yeah! Squawk! Man, Squawk, you got so strong! Fidgeting, I'm really happy I used you. You were really cool. Floaty, I'm also really happy I used you. And Dance, I'm still really happy I used you. I'm sorry you didn't do that much. You tried, though. And same with you too, Doorbell. Like, I actually really like this team. It was a lot of fun. Like, not at all a powerhouse team, but... It was fun to use. <laughs> like, I enjoyed the squad here. They were they were fun. They were definitely fun. I really wish I could have used Dance more in the Elite Four. Like, I just had really good Pokemon to use against pretty much every other member. So it's like, oh, yeah, that'll be fine. And, you know, I figured Charm, you know, if I could get Reflect up and Charm and all that. Like, Garchomp wouldn't be a threat. And <laughs> no, it wasn't. But Squawk finally loved me enough. He was always the one that I didn't think liked me that much. I don't dance since she needed to uh, evolve by happiness. I, I always kind of thought she hated me, but it was really Squawk that I always thought did. But he loved me in the end anyway. All right. Well, there we go. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Adventure has now been beaten. Oh, man. And, you know, I'm, I'm just going to kind of go on a little tangent during the credits here. Just kind of talk about the history of of me and YouTube and the, the original Diamond Adventure, because that's something that was, you know, so important to me and to a lot of people growing up. And, you know, I know I've been all over the place with, you know, my YouTube plans and everything and, you know, just what I really want to do. And I, I still don't really want to do much with YouTube going forward. Like, I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you. But when I saw this announced, I knew I had to do something. I mean, it's so sentimental. Like, it, it really is. And seeing the games brought back in, like, 3D and everything and on the Switch, like, I know I've complained a fair amount here and there, but I did at least enjoy the nostalgia. I think that was particularly fun. That was something that I wish I would have gotten from, say, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I know that, that Ruby and Sapphire or Emerald, you know, they were really important in a lot of people's lives. That was kind of Diamond and Pearl for me. And I didn't really want a remake. I wasn't really on the, you know, Sinnoh remake train because I enjoyed the games just as they were. But, you know, when they were announced, I figured, hey, you know what? This isn't necessarily what I wanted, but I'm looking forward to kind of reliving some of that nostalgia. And, you know, like I just kind of said, I don't really know what I want to do for YouTube, so, you know, just keep that in mind going forward. But I knew I needed to do this. I knew I needed to, and I'm happy I did. And hopefully you enjoyed the adventure along the way, too. I didn't want it to step on the original Diamond Adventure's toes. Like, I did make a few puns here and there that, you know, were from the original, and that was pretty fun. But I didn't want it to just be a carbon copy. I wanted it to be its own adventure. And also, wow, it looks like I'm like falling back. What the heck? Someone catch me. Uh, I wanted it to be its own adventure. I thought that was important too. So hopefully this had an identity of its own as well, because, you know, it was good. And, you know, as far as criticism of the game, I definitely feel it is important to, to take a look at things with an objective eye and to really criticize it. And I, definitely feel like I honestly I do feel like Ilka did a pretty good job I think a lot of the issues I have with the game and my experience with it are actually things that probably 
you know, the Pokemon company kind of said, hey, we need to have it this way. Like the experience share. What I think Ilka did was, you know, work on probably like the movesets for Pokemon and trainers and gym leaders and stuff. And the AI, you know, things like that. They probably needed to keep it to the same specs, like the same levels and stuff. And that's why it didn't really scale throughout the game. In hindsight, I wish that they just would have done better scaling. I know in modern RPGs, like non-Pokemon RPGs, but modern RPGs, it is common to have your whole party gain experience. Like, I am I wish that wouldn't be the case. I wish it were still something you could turn off because of situations like, oh, well, now my Pokemon are level 60 and everything else I'm fighting is level 40. You know, I don't like that. I don't like games to be, you know, ridiculously hard either. I think it's important for for games to be accessible to all audiences. And I do understand and realize that the experience share helps with that. But I don't know. I, I just really, I feel like they did it a bit better in Sword and Shield, at least, for scaling and all that. Same with Sun and Moon. You know, they use proportionate level stuff. And I just wish they would have gotten it right, because so many of the, the more challenging fights in this game were just they were a joke because I was too high a level just because I wanted to fight things and explore. And I don't know. That's that's how it goes. But again, I don't actually fault Ilka. I think they did pretty good. And at the very least, I had a fun time going down memory lane. It was very nostalgic. Hopefully you enjoyed it as well. And hopefully you'll be looking forward to doing some stuff in the post game. Oh yeah. Thanks for watching everyone. And I'll see you next time.